Welcome to Buy Local TV, where we're promoting Michigan businesses, communities, and its people. Frank and I are up here at St. Ignace in beautiful Michigan, just across the bridge. You know, we're kind of overlooking the lighthouse, and we've got Mackinac Island, you know, right over here to our to our uh, east. And we're up here on assignment for ETV. We're shooting some promotional videos for Mackinac, St. Ignace, and Sault Ste. Marie. And, you know, we're also getting some stock footage for ourselves and some photos. And, Frank, tell me a little bit about the weather here today. Well, it's about 15 degrees right now, but it's supposed to warm up into the 20s sometime. But with the proper winter gear, we're, we're keeping warm. And uh, like Dwayne said, it's beautiful out here. I mean, we uh, witnessed a sunrise and, and uh, looking at the lighthouse in the background and the island. It's just a beautiful place to be in the wintertime. It sure is. And speaking of the sunrise, you know, that was our, our main purpose of getting over here early this morning was to see that sun come up. And I'll tell you what, in Michigan, there's nothing more beautiful than watching the sunrise as you're looking at the island. Even though it may be frozen, it's still beautiful. Sure is, Dwayne. It's good to be here. Well, we're going to go out and do some more footage and we'll be back with you soon. We're up here in uh Staying in this area, could you tell us a little bit about where we are on the trail, what this is called, and maybe how long you've been, been skiing this area? Okay, this is the Sand Dunes Trail, and I have been skiing here for about 30 years. And there's a variety of loops, uh, very easy to very difficult. And we've been on them all. <laughs> you know, we're, we're only 10 miles from St. Ignis, but it's a pretty popular trail system and very close to the sand dunes on Lake Michigan. So hiking trails in the summer, ski trails in the winter. Straits Area Groomer Club, and uh, we cover about 110 miles of trail. We usually run out of St. Ignace, and that goes up as far as uh, over towards Eight Mile Junction, Cedarville area, and then right back down and around. Then we have a second groomer that runs out of Brevoort that will cover from Brevoort to Trout Lake and over to Rexon area, and then back into Brevoort. We also do a little bit of grading in the summer for uh, ATV four-wheeling and our newest thing now is doing a little bit of brushing on the trails and tree trim and, and signing as well. We're up here today for the I-500 snowmobile race. It's just underway. We're down here in the pits today and, you know, Frank, this is our first time up here. What's your observation of what's going on? Well, to be honest with you, Dwayne, I never even heard of this event before today. Um, and I'm just amazed at how many people are here already. Uh, we heard uh, upwards to 10,000 people will be at this event. Uh, we sh showed up about two hours ago and people were already starting to come in. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of excitement in the air. We talked to some of the drivers and uh, they just love it here. And uh, it sounds like there's gonna be a lot of action going on here. On the yeah, I can't wait. Uh, we're gonna be right up on the, uh, right on the bridge as it gets started. So we're gonna see, I guess they tell us at the start is the most exciting part because you've got like 35 drivers all vying for a spot and uh, it was it's it's kind of what they say it's a marathon you don't want to hit it too quick because you got 500 miles and it takes two to three drivers sometimes to complete this race so um you know we're gonna you know kind of go around here and and grab a, grab some more shots and again you know if anybody out there you know we're, we're by local tv we're here promoting michigan businesses communities and its people so if you've got something an event coming up let us know we'll be happy to come out and see what we can do to help you promote it for this week's marketing tip and tech tip we're going to uh, talk a little bit about logo design and you know when you're a community or you're a business you got to have a nice logo design can you tell me a little bit about what what they do up here at Sault Ste. Marie to promote the I-500. Well, for this event in particular, what they do is they get the kids involved in the schools here, and they, they put on a little contest um, for uh, the artwork that goes on the buttons that are used to purchase the, you know, for their admission, uh, this button right here. Uh, so the winner of that contest gets to display their artwork on this button for everyone to see. And you know, speaking of artwork and design in that, uh, Frank, I think we're going to take it back to the studio because there's a lot of difference when you're designing your logo, designing your artwork for for use for business or for an event. And why don't we take it back to the studio and have you explain the difference between pixel and vector art and the importance for when we're taking it, um, you know, for a good company image. So, Frank, why don't you get back to the studio? All right. 
Well, Dwayne, I'm back here in the studio like you asked so I can show our viewers the difference between pixel and vector-based graphics. Now, for an example, I have our BiLocal logo up on the screen, both in pixel and vector formats. First, let's take a look at the pixel version of this logo. This logo consists of square pixels that are locked into a particular size, which is okay for some applications. For instance, if you were to use this logo on your website, it would be optimized for web viewing anyway, so a pixel-based image would work fine. Now taking this image though and scaling it up to a much larger size for a different print application uh, would cause it to be very pixelated and the results would be less than desirable. So it's definitely best to start in vector format and let's see why. Now looking at the vector version of this logo as I zoom in, you can definitely see a difference as we have nice sharp edges and the quality is much much better. Now if you were to take this logo and scale it to to a much larger size for those print applications, you would maintain those nice sharp edges and quality. So although sometimes a pixel image is all you need, it's definitely best to start in vector so that you can resize your logo to fit any of your media needs. Now remember, you are trying to brand yourself, so quality is essential. Now if you need help creating that perfect graphic or logo in vector, give us a call. We are here to help you. Well, it's time for me to head back up to the Great White North with you, Dwayne. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Tech Tip. Well, Frank, I'm glad you made it back from the studio so quick, and thank you for that information regarding, you know, uh, vector and pixels and, and, and why a person needs to have their logo done in vector art so that, you know, it, it's just you get an all-around better use that way. So thank you for getting back from the You're studio welcome. so quick. You know, and the big thing about coming up here is you need to find a local because there are some out-of-the-way trails, some out-of-the-way places that you really need to talk to a local and you need to find out, okay, where do we need to go? The Cut River Bridge has some trails back in there. Great. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, miles of trails for snowmobiling and for cross-country skiing. And, and the other day, can you tell me a little bit about your little adventure that you had while we were on a snowmobile and, and Melissa? It was my camera that he was carrying. <laughs> tell me what tell me what happened. Well, we were going down the trail and uh, we were leading the pack and I was uh, sitting in the back and I was capturing all the snowmobilers uh, racing towards us. So it was a really fast ride and it was safe up to the point where we <laughs> went to stop and uh, suddenly my seat decided to uh, come off. So I kind of just tipped over and fell on the ground and but I kept the camera safe. Uh, we just had a little incident with the, the mic uh, bracket popped off, but I, uh, I saved the camera. And with a little Velcro, uh, I was able to make it through the rest of the week with that. For all you people that are looking at coming up to northern Michigan, and you think that northern Michigan is only a summertime adventure, you're wrong. There is so much to do up here. There, there's snowmobiling, and if you don't have one, I mean, quality in. David down here at Quality Inn, he worked with us on our snowmobile footage, and he was great to work with. So look him up, you know, um, and there's some other places around, but you can come up and rent a snowmobile for a day. I'm sure if you've got cross-country skis or snowshoeing, um, you, you've got ice fishing and, and all different things you can do. And I'm sure, and we didn't make it in this trip, but we're going to make it in another, to Quamanon Falls in the winter. has got to be beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that one. Really disappointed that we couldn't make it yesterday because it was on the gloomy side, so the colors weren't going to pop like we wanted them to, but that's definitely in our future. Well, as we're wrapping up our up north adventure, you know, we're here at the Sioux. We're at the I-500 track. The race is going on. We've been down on the pits. We've been all over northern Michigan, and you know, Northern Michigan in the wintertime is beautiful. It's not just coming up here in the summertime to see the locks or to see the bridge or to get some fudge. It also come up here and enjoy some outdoor activities. Uh, we actually found a spot where you could see the bridge. I mean, it was the perfect inline sight to the bridge and it was just breathtaking. And uh, seeing the dogs playing in the snow and, and seeing the trees, you know, uh, through the trail, it was just, it was all beautiful, and it, it was a place that I personally have never seen before or heard of, and so it was really neat to see actually how much there really is to do up here. We have had a great time up here, and you know, sponsoring events, doing community stuff, doing business stuff, I mean, what we are, we're about Michigan. We're about buying local in Michigan, supporting Michigan businesses, communities, 
and its people. So from the great white north, as they say, I'm Dwayne. And I'm Frank. Remember to buy local.